In this episode, we'll learn how to reduce the number of requests you make to the Stripe API by expanding objects in responses. This tool could greatly increase the performance of your system by addressing the n plus one problem with API requests. All objects in the Stripe API have unique IDs. You can use these IDs to retrieve, update, and delete these objects. The API also uses these IDs to link related objects together. A checkout session, for example, links to a customer by the customer ID. Not all properties can be expanded. The API reference marks expandable properties with the expandable label. We'll look at how to modify your requests to include properties from related objects, properties from distantly related objects, additional properties on all objects in a list, and properties that aren't included by default in a response. Before we get started, it's important to note that while expansion can speed up your integration by decreasing the number of API requests that you make, expanding responses can impact the performance of a single request. To keep requests fast, try to limit the number of nested expansions on list requests and only expand objects that you're actually using. In cases where you need information from a linked object, you can retrieve that object in a second call using its ID. For example, let's retrieve a customer for a particular checkout session. This approach requires two API requests to access just one value. If you need information from multiple linked objects, each one would require a separate request, which all adds to the latency and complexity of your application. Let's assume now that you want the customer's default payment method for invoices. We can see from the logs that there were three API calls to determine the payment method. The API has an expand feature that allows you to retrieve linked objects in a single call, effectively replacing the object ID with the properties and values of that object. For example, say you wanted to access details on a customer associated with a given checkout session, you would retrieve the checkout session and pass the customer property to the expand array, which tells Stripe to include the entire customer object in the response. If we look at the logs, we can see that only one API request was made. To expand multiple properties in one call, add additional items to the expand array. For example, if you want to expand both the customer and the payment intent for a given checkout session, you would pass an expand array with both the customer and the payment intent strings. Now say you'd like to work with an object that's nested deeply across multiple linked resources. For instance, if you want to know the type of payment method that was used for a given checkout session, you would first retrieve the checkout session's payment intent, then retrieve the payment intent's linked payment method to get its type. Again, this is the expensive approach.
Looking at the logs, we can see that there were multiple API requests to determine the payment method. To optimize this, you can reach the payment method by recursively expanding using dot notation in one call. The logs show that we achieved the same result with just one API call. Expansions have a maximum depth of four levels, meaning that an expand string can contain no more than four dot delimited properties. When the API returns a list of objects, you can use the keyword data to expand a given property on each object in that list. For example, Say you need information about the payment methods used by one of your customers. To get this information, you would list the customer's payment intents. Then for each payment intent, make another call to the API for each of those to get the payment method used. So if you're following along, you know that this is a bad approach and there must be a better way. The logs clearly show the iteration and calls to the API. Rather than looping through each payment intent in the list and retrieving the linked payment methods in separate calls, you can expand all of the payment methods at once using the keyword data. The list now includes the full payment method object on each payment intent. And again, the logs show us that we've saved a lot of API calls to retrieve the same required data. In some cases, resources have properties that aren't included by default. One example is the checkout session's light items property, which is only included in responses if requested by using the expand parameter.
Expansion isn't limited to GET requests. You can also specify an expansion array when creating or updating objects in the API. You may, for example, want to create a payment intent with a customer ID and receive the associated customer expanded in the response. One final parting thought. You can't receive webhook events with properties auto-expanded. Objects sent in events are always in their minimal form. To access nested values and expandable properties, you must retrieve the object in a separate call from within your webhook event handler. Thank you so much for watching this episode on expansion and until next time, stay safe. Thank you.